The topic or the theme for today's TEDx is evolve. I started pondering what was that one thing which was constant in my life and career. And I've realized that there was one common thread which bound me across my life and career and that is change. Change in everything I do, how I've embraced it. Of course, there have been challenges as always and I had to take small steps to embrace change but it was change nevertheless. That's the topic for today, embracing change and how I've evolved embracing change in my life and career. Like all stories do, I'll start at the very beginning. Like all Indian parents and grandparents want their children to be their doctors or engineers, mine wanted me to be a doctor. In fact, my grandfather even bought me a real stethoscope, a rubber stamp, a white coat, and a nameplate with Master of Surgeon and hung it in the living room of our house when I was 10 years old. Even I thought and believed that I would be a doctor. And I played doctor as well. And in fact, tried my hand in calligraphy of writing undecipherable cursive handwriting when I was in high school. So no pressure there. Now comes the moment after my 10th boards, when I need to get into my plus two, I had to choose a subject. It was an obvious choice even for me that I would take biology, physics, and chemistry because I wanted to be a doctor and that was my plan. And when I started filling the application, when I went um, to the hostel, I realized that I filled in mathematics. It was not biology. Until that moment when I put my pen on the paper in the application form, I didn't realize that I loved math much more. And I took it. It didn't feel any different. It didn't even occur to me I changed my decision. It felt so natural. I just went with the flow. My parents did come to know about it after a few months when I went back home for holidays. And it was during a conversation I told, I was referring to probability when we were playing a game of cards. That was it. I took math because I loved it, not because I wanted to be an engineer. I wanted to be a doctor. I had a plan to be a doctor, but I listened to my gut. I changed the decision. I embraced it and moved on. And that's where I'm an engineer now. A Couple of years later, there was again an opportunity to choose which specialization. It was obviously engineering. I knew what I didn't want to be. I knew that I didn't want to be a mechanical engineer or a civil engineer. So I said, okay, I'm gonna take electronics and communications and have a bigger funnel, postponing the decision by a few years. Around third year, I realized electronics was not my piece of cake. So when the campus interviews happened, I sat in for interviews with software companies and I got a placement and that's how I've become a software engineer. I started as a developer, tried my hands in from kernel programming to databases to UX and I was good at it. In my previous organization at Intel, we could take on different projects Right? And this is on volunteer basis. And of course I did, I tried multiple projects, but never as a developer. My day job was as a developer, but I took on different roles, whether it was a business analyst, a technical product manager, or a business product manager. And inadvertently, I started adding different skills into my repertoire, right? So that was very important, it helped me a lot. I realized I tried, I liked trying multiple things, and I did that. Now, for personal reasons, I had to move to Hyderabad, and I, Intel was in Bangalore, so I applied for a company called Microsoft, which was based in Hyderabad at, the, at that point of time, and I've applied for a developer role because I was a developer. And during the interview process, the interviewer told me that there are three different disciplines in r and I'm in product development, and uh, the first thing, there was one word I used. Program management sounds interesting. That was the word I used. And the interview went on. We talked about some design problems, data structures, but there was no coding question. So at the end of the interview, I was a little flabbergasted. What's happening? There's no coding question. So I asked him, to what role am I being interviewed for? And he said, I thought you'd like to try for a PM, so you are in the PM loop. Can you come for face-to-face -face interviews tomorrow to Hyderabad, and we'll take it forward. And that's where I am. I'm in Microsoft for the last 17 years as a PM, and I love my job. I've embraced it. 
I want to stress that at this point of time, right, it was knowingly or unknowingly, I've added lots of skills with experiences, and that was very important, right? And I've taken multiple jobs, and it wasn't easy, right? You have to take extra jobs and added all the skills. And that gave me confidence to grab the opportunity when it came by. So go ahead, always add, try to add as many skills as possible. And I continued this tradition of doing V-team projects, even after I joined Microsoft, and purely out of passion and personal satisfaction. I'm going to share a few projects, very interesting projects which I've worked on in V-teams, other than my day job. Uh, which address some societal challenges. One such pilot project is connecting remote villages and schools which does not have digital internet using TV white spaces, that's analog frequencies, and all the students of the schools had internet at that point of time using TV white spaces. There's no internet at that, until that point of time. And we worked in collaboration with the government of India. Another project is with the boards. How many of you have heard exam paper leakage a few years back? A show of hands. Most of you did, right? And there was a lot of stress the students have undergone because they had to write the exams again. At this point of time, we've collaborated with the board to pilot digitally encrypted question papers. And this is a countrywide pilot. So, and we used to send these papers just before the exam starts so that there's no paper leakage. We wanted to curtail that, and that concept is mainstream now. Over the years, we've also developed apps uh, in one of the hackathons. Hackathons is a very big event in Microsoft, and uh, this app, we've used geospatial tech to provide information to the local government in, you know, by just a couple of clicks, instead of citizens filling up long forms. And this app was showcased in the World Metropolis Congress that year, which was held in India. Another year, we built another app called SMS Organizer, and it used AI ML models to cut the SMS spam or clutter in your devices. Not just that, we've also made quick action cards where it would give you reminders whether for your bill payments or your movie timings or your train tickets or travel tickets. And these models are built in such a way that they're very small, it can work on any mobile device, even with small specs. And the model runs on the device, none of your data goes into, onto the cloud, ensuring there's data privacy. These are some of the projects which I kind of worked on over the years. Do note that not everything is successful. There are going to be some his, hits and there are going to be some misses. Each opportunity opens the gates for the next one. Everything will add up to our experiences, and there's no replacement for experiences, right? If you know where you want to be, focus on acquiring those skills. If you do not, absolutely fine. Try different things, figure out what you love, and go for it. Let's move on to the next stage, and let me tell you a story where I started becoming more self-aware. I was known to be a very aggressive person, and people felt I was not approachable and I had constant free, uh, feedback from lots of people and lots of avenues. Uh, obviously, you'll be hurt, right? And uh, I tried very hard at that point of time to change myself and take that feedback. Taking feedback is important, but I think I've taken it too much to my heart and I've become too soft and compliant and I've lost myself in the process and if it, because it affected me personally. In due course, I realized that I was not true to my, myself and had to do a course correction. Today, I'm perceived, the word is perceived, uh, that I'm more assertive, not aggressive, not soft. I am soft and kind in my delivery, but I'm aggressive in my work, in action, in the way I do my work, right? So I guess I kind of figured the balance over the years with experience. The biggest lesson I've learned with this episode is to take feedback. It's very important to take feedback and incorporate it, but do so only when it makes sense to you. Do not let it change you as a person. You have to remain very, very true to you, to your own core. Don't do it to please others. That's very, very important. That's the biggest lesson I've learned. We all went through pandemic and have seen tremendous changes, both in the way we work, 
the way we study, and the way we conduct business. And I've gone through it as well. And I made some conscious changes, especially at work. During the pandemic, there have been millions of children who have been affected. And I wanted to do something to give back. So I looked at avenues within the company and see how can I give back. Right, and this time I wanted to do it in my day job. So I took on a role of leading Microsoft, this is an online learning platform called Microsoft Community Training, and leveraged partnerships Microsoft had with multiple NGOs and nonprofit organizations and we, to provide a digital learning platform, both in online and offline mode, including refugee camps, and impacted millions and millions of students across the globe. <laughs> learning Passport, which is powered by Microsoft Community Training, and a collaboration between Microsoft, UNICEF, and multiple other organizations was part of Time's Top 100 Innovations last year, 2021. It is, thank you. It is one of my best experiences by far where technology was leveraged in addressing societal challenges and created hope for children. In this digital age, we all have an opportunity to transform people's lives which was hard to imagine a decade ago. So let's all give up a bit and try to bridge this digital divide gap. That's my ask for all of you. How many of you want to ensure that you are indispensable? A show of hands here? A lot of us, right? I was like that too. As I moved into leadership roles, today I watch out and act consciously try to look for opportunities to make myself dispensable. I need to get out of the job. Uh, and this actually works. Uh, you know, as your team takes on the challenge, the baton, you can move on to the next change and challenge and you'll learn more. We can do this by active delegation. And when the team pick up the slack and don't miss a beat, you know that they are ready and you can move on. That's very important as you get into leadership roles. Last but not the least, Another important one is networking. It is super important to learn and grow. Networking is a very, very well discussed topic, but for personally for me, the way I think about it is, it does, not, it does not matter who you know or what you know. What matters is who knows what you know, and that is the core. If people know what you're good at or what you're interested in, they will reach out to you when there's an opportunity arises, right? Let me share a couple of examples, very recent examples, in fact. A friend of mine once called me and said she's looking for a speaker to speak on artificial intelligence uh, for a panel discussion which was hosted by the British Deputy High Commission. She said, I was the first person she could recollect and reached out to me. I've collaborated with her in one of the hackathons. I do not know her very well. I just collaborated with her in one of the hackathons and spoke to her a couple of times, right? After the panel discussion, I, came, I was speaking to the audience and came to know that all the, most of the audience was Shevning Allen. So I realized what, I was trying to figure out what is Shevning. And then that's the first time I realized that there is Shevning. UK government's Foreign Common Development Office actually funds Shevning fellowships and scholarships for Indian students or in fact global students across the globe. Their science and leadership program is hosted in Oxford University. And I thought I'll apply for it, but initially I was a little in intimidated. Oxford University, can I apply, can I get into it? You know, the first thing was self-rejection, right? We all tend to self-reject ourselves, and I was no exception. The friends I made that evening provided a nudge, so I applied for it, got into it. In fact, I've spent eight weeks earlier this year in Oxford, learning from the who's who of not just UK, but from my very learned peers from India and Sri Lanka, who become great friends and lifelong, I built lifelong friendships. It was an amazing experience. It was like this coming to this college, you know, I went back to college with lots of friends. It was an amazing experience. I got this opportunity because of my peripheral network and didn't give in to my self-rejection, right? So that's one takeaway. Another example is me speaking here today with all of you. 
I've collaborated with one of the TEDx organizers in 2015, and we've lost touch over the years. And it was such a pleasant surprise to hear from him saying, hey, Sandhya, do you remember me? And that's why I'm here. Another good way to think about networking is being accessible. Uh, somebody had access to my email, somebody had access to my phone number, it could be LinkedIn, it could be social media. Make sure you're accessible so that when the opportunity knocks on your doors, you can open it and embrace it with both your hands. And more importantly, when you're accessible, you will also hear things which you need to hear, not just what you want to hear. And what, how does that help? It helps you because they'll give you real feedback with which you can take action and it helps you learn and grow. Before I close, I'd, I'd like to call out that we're all very privileged to be here and it is important to count our blessings and pay it forward. I do it through mentoring, leveraging technology or engaging with NGOs, whatever works, right? I would urge you to think about it, what, what works for you and take on that. Parivartana mevas tiramasti. Change is constant. The only thing that is constant in this world is change. So embrace change, adapt, and make the most of it without letting go of yourself. Thank you so much for this opportunity, Jai Hind. <laughs>